So enzymes are really essential for our body. Okay. Why are they essential? Because they carry out multiple purposes in our body. All right. So, and the role of enzymes in organisms. So, metabolism are chemical reaction that occurs within a living organism. Seperti saya explain tadi. Enzymes pula, they regulate almost all cellular reactions in your body. Enzymes are biological catalysts. Kerja diorang untuk menu, to speed up to reduce the rate of reaction of a process that is occurring in your body. You will learn this in chemistry as well. So the general characteristics of enzymes is that the enzymes are proteins which are synthesized by living organisms. Enzymes, they alter the speed or the rate of chemical reaction and they have specific sites, okay? called active sites to bind the specific substrate. Maksudnya, you tak boleh guna enzyme lain untuk enzyme function dia uh, to use it for a different substrate. You cannot do that. Okay, so enzymes are highly specific. Each enzyme can only catalyze one kind of substrate, tetapi it can, it is reusable. It can be reused multiple times. So I also taught you guys regarding the naming, the nomenclature, how it is done, okay? And the synthesis of enzyme, how it is synthesis from ribosome. Now kita akan masuk dalam intracellular enzyme dengan extracellular enzyme. So enzyme synthesis by specific cells, enzymes which are produced and retained in the cell for the use of the cell inside itself is called intracellular. Ni maksudnya dalam sel tu enzymes telah dihasilkan untuk kegunaan dia sendiri bukan untuk to the general body um, outside that. Example, the enzyme lactase catalyzes lactose sugar in milk. So these enzymes are found in the cytoplasm nucleus mitochondria and chloroplast. Okay, so if you learn in form 5, you will learn um, coordination and response. Di mana ada nerve cells. Kalau korang ingat lagi chapter 1, mesti akan belajar um, type of cells, nerve cells, blood cells, lepas tu tissue. So you akan belajar nerve tissue juga kan. Even and then it forms a system. So there is almost around 12 to 13 system in your body. Each system has its own organs, um, tissues, cells, and enzymes are found in literally almost all the um, systems, okay, to help us to ease the process. So enzymes which are produced inside the cell tapi they secreted kepada luar cell untuk function externally are called extracellular enzymes. For example, digestive, digestive enzymes produced by the pancreas are not used by the cell in the pancreas but are transported to the duodenum which is the actual site of enzymatic reaction. Okay, untuk memecahkan the makanan that we eat, right? So pancreas, it breaks down the sugar content, all right? So production of extracellular uh, banyak contoh ada. Many enzymes produced by specialized cells are secreted outside the cell. For example, pancreatic cell, dia punya target dia lain. Okay. Production of extracellular pula. The nucleus contains DNA which carries the information for synthesis of enzyme. Okay. Through rough endoplasmic reticulum, the protein is synthesized by ribosomes which are transmitted by the space within the RER. Okay. And then the proteins depart from the RER wrapped in the vesicles, okay, transport vesicles that butt off from membranes of the rough um, endosplasmic reticulum. Now, these transport vesicles then fuse with the membrane of the Golgi apparatus. Ingat lagi tak Golgi apparatus? Do you guys remember the function and the shape of the Golgi apparatus? Can you tell me? Our friend Zakwan is asking what was last week homework. Last week homework I did give you guys regarding um 
the anabolism and catabolism the function of it i posted it on facebook I gave you guys few objective questions i even discussed it with you one question of it right now just now i had a the definition for catabolism and anabolism okay so that was last week this week i want to ask you guys apakah itu gorgia protest what it does and how it's the shape of it Please let me know, guys. I need to know your understanding in biology. Boys and girls, what is Golgi apparatus? Bila jawab. A complex of vesicles and folded membranes within the cytoplasm of most eukaryotic cells involve in secretion and intracellular transport. Okay, bagus. Function utama dia apa? I need to hear the keyword functions of it. What it does, the function of it. Uh, the function is modifying, sorting, and packaging of proteins for secretion. Yep, bingo, right answer. So you need to understand each of the organelles function their supaya as you learn more in biology, you shall not forget them. Cepat nak relate setiap benda tu. So by mentioning ribosomes, perlu tahu dah dia punya fungsi utama adalah untuk menghasilkan protein. Bagi apparatus perlu tahu dah. So rough ER dengan what is the one more endoplasmic reticulum that we have in our body, in our organelles? Anyone else? Can you reply? Okay guys, if you couldn't explain that, you need to relearn the first few chapters to understand, okay? But we can't um, spend our time on that for now. Let us finish enzymes, all right? So these transport vesicles then fuse with the membranes of the Golgi apparatus and empty their contents into membranous space. So our friend told us that its function is to modify and packaging, right? So there comes the next line. The proteins are further modified during their transport in the Golgi apparatus. For example, carbohydrates are added to protein to make glycoproteins. Ni level tinggi sikit. Tapi fahamkan the concept dia di mana secretory vesicles containing these modified protein buds of the Golgi apparatus travel to the plasma membrane. So it it involves the Golgi apparatus modifying the package which receives by from the vesicles from the RER. Okay, understand the opening concept and the process. Now, these vesicles will then fuse with the plasma membrane before releasing the protein outside the cells as enzymes. Okay, so this is the production of extracellular enzyme 
macam mana dia dihasilkan dalam tapi dia keluar untuk kegunaan luar sel. Okay. As you can see here, this is a short diagram infograph to explain to you guys regarding the intracellular and extracellular enzyme. It's vital for you to understand the process of it and what it does and how it does. So intracellular is synthesized and retained in the cell for the use of the cell itself. And it's found in the cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplast of plants. Examples, the oxidoreductase catalyzed biological oxidation. So we have these enzymes in our body, in our cells, for the usage of our own cells. And also the reduction in the mitochondria. Contoh extracellular pula untuk luar sel adalah digestive enzyme yang dihasilkan di pankreas untuk kegunaan duodenum. Okay, untuk memecahkan makanan. Now let's look at the mechanism of enzyme action. Mechanism and the action also near how it works, what it does. So each enzyme molecule has a region with very precise shape called active site. By now you should already wondering apa itu active site, uh, enzyme sus substrate, what is this lock and key model, kan? So the enzyme then changes the substrate either by splitting it apart as in hydrolysis or linking them together as in condensation. Dua nama process, kan? So I tadi dah explain hydrolysis process macam mana. Condensation is we are condensing it to become a whole product. It's a um, anabolism kind of um, process. Dia menyatu padukan. Dia to linking them together. Splitting it apart, they pecahkan, hydrolysis. Now, once formed, the products no longer fit in the active site and escape into the surrounding medium, leaving the active site free to receive other substrate. Ni maksudnya enzymes are reusable. Okay. So the explanation of enzyme action is known as the lock and key hypothesis, where the substrate is a key hose shape which is complementary to the enzyme or lock. The lock and key hypothesis is able to explain why enzyme are specific, why any changes in the shape of enzyme alters its effectiveness. Sekarang, apakah itu lock and key? Okay, this is the lock and key. Why do we use this ideology, this contoh sebab, kan saya bagi tahu, enzyme itu sangat specific. Contohnya, you ada, let's assume here the enzyme is the lock. Okay, enzyme tu adalah the lock, and the substrate di sini tu adalah um, the key. So, the pattern of the substrate kena ngam dengan pattern of the enzyme. Baru dia boleh work together. So, once they work together, as you can see there, the substrate, they can the same shape in order to fit in the active side of enzyme. Kalau shape lain, dia tak boleh masuk. Kalau dia masuk je, dia boleh We'll go to the next stage, which is the enzyme substrate complex. So, we already know the shape of the enzyme um, substrate. Now, we are looking at the um, lock and key hypothesis. So, the lock and key hypothesis is this one. Okay? So, this is how enzymes work. Okay, this is an infographic for you as well. Need enzyme, that black color, purplish color bat. That is the active side, ruang, okay, where the chemical changes will occur between the substrate. So when the substrate is perfectly pairing, okay, which concludes the fact that enzymes are extremely precise, maka enzyme akan memecahkan substrate dia menggunakan the stage called enzyme substrate complex. So you will need to draw these diagrams later on, okay. Once the enzyme is done with its function, it breaks down the product into two different products. Okay, so once that is done, here is another picture. Nampak tak active site dia macam mana, substrate dia apa, and how it is um, used here. And the bond breaks under stress. Dia macam bahasa mudah bagi the enzymes function. Okay, enzyme substrate complex hasilnya adalah produk dengan enzyme. 
So we have factors which affect the enzyme function. So Bob, allow the punya enzyme is not at this one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's not in this um, hexagonal shape or if let's say a different shape which has to sit here in the active site, okay? What will happen is it wouldn't sit. But, and there are many factors which affect and um, the changes of the um, enzyme punya sizing uh, yang makes it uh, impossible for it to sit on the active site. Okay, so there antara factors dia adalah uh, I wanted to show you guys this as well. So this is another picture of how the enzyme uh, working. Now if the, if the shape is not same, it couldn't sit, right? That is why there are a few factors which could affect these changes, the shape of it. So we are going to look at the factors, how it changes it, why it does, and by doing that, what happens to these enzymes. So let's look at the factors which are affecting it. The first factor we have is temperature. So at because of temperature, at low temperature, these enzymes catalyze reaction progress slowly. Berarti kata lain, pada temperature yang sangat kurang, suhu yang sangat kurang, enzyme catalyze reaction berlaku dengan very slow. Because enzyme, they have their optimum pH and optimum temperature. If it has a low temperature, a low pH, which is tak sesuai dengan enzyme tu, dia tak, tidak boleh uh, work effectively lah, right? So, what will happen is, at increase in temperature pull up, will increase the rate of reaction of the enzyme because the kinetic energy of enzyme and substrate molecules produces more collision. Therefore, more enzyme substrates complex are formed. Tetapi, for every increase in temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, the, the, the rate of reaction is double, which is good. Rate of reaction increase up to the maximum at the optimum temperature, good. Optimum temperature of human enzymes is about 37 degrees, which is the temperature of our human body as well. Very good. But above the optimum temperature, the rate of reaction falls quickly. Sebab apa? Dia panas sangat. Our, if our body is really, really hot or really, really cold, the internal environment is unable to maintain it, then your enzymes will fail. Even for cooking, also same, all right? Same concept. Animals, same concept. Above the optimum temperature, the rate of reaction falls quickly because the bonds, the bonds maintaining the structure of the enzyme start to break and the active site loses its shape. When the active site loses its shape, it cannot be used anymore. The enzymes cannot um, merge over there, okay? and carry out the enzyme substrate complexes cannot be formed. So, but enzyme akan denature the temperature yang sangat tinggi. Denature maksudnya hancur. The form is breaking down. So, that is denature. Most enzyme catalyzed reactions stop at 60 degrees Celsius, meaning above 60 degrees Celsius, these enzymes cannot work normally. They will break down, all right? Because the temperature is too hot or too much for them. It's not their optimum temperature. Therefore, it doesn't work the way it is designed for. If side dia akan hancur, lose its shape, cannot be used. So, soalannya patutnya adalah, okay, what happened to this denature? Tak boleh pakai. Apa akan jadi? That comes your chapter 1, 2 again. What is the cell that destroys other cells? The cell yang akan um, denature other cells and it's like the tong sampa punya thing. It, it destroys other cells yang dah rosak, yang tak boleh pakai. We have a cell in our body, a specific organelle, a specific function, which is a specific digestive enzyme to break down other cells like this. I need the answer, guys. I need to know your understanding in the previous chapter. So, boleh tak bagi jawapan, bagi soalan saya tadi? It is in the first few chapters where you learned about 
rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus. Okay, it's a vesicle lysosome. Betul. So, what does lysosome does? I shock. Apakah function dia? What it does? Hancurkan sel yang dah mati ataupun yang sudah damage. Betul. So, always remember your basics lah guys. Now, let's look at the next factor which affects the enzyme. Which is pH. Macam saya katakan tadi. Uh, enzymes are very very specific and very very uh, fragile. Sebenarnya so, dengan temperature yang tak bersesuai dengan dia Ataupun pH yang bersesuai dengan dia Dia akan damage So most enzyme effective in a narrow pH range Dia effective pada pH uh, Contohnya 5 hingga 7 Ataupun 4 hingga 3 Macam tu je Okay if it's way out of its league It won't work Contohnya Your pH in your stomach In your mouth In your reproductive area Under your armpit Um inside other regions of your body are all different. Memang ada ter, uh, dapat enzymes di banyak places of these regions I mentioned just now. If this pH, uh, if the enzymes are located at different regions, they are useless. They wouldn't work at all. Alright? Because the pH is vital. If the pH is not suitable, it wouldn't work. It will fail to work or it could damage the enzyme. Okay, so the optimum pH is the particular pH which the rate of reaction is the fastest maximum. A change in pH can alter the charges on the active side of the enzyme and the substrate surfaces. So, contoh di sini adalah, active side ni, action dia, there are the few charges at the active, active sites which will break down the uh, substrate to form products. This can reduce the ability of both molecules to bind each other. So when the pH changes, it changes the charges at the active site. And the effect dia, dia akan kurangkan ability, the keupayaan untuk dua molecule untuk bind to which it, with each other. So unlike the effects of temperature on enzyme, the effect of pH on enzyme are normally reversible. Maksudnya, apabila pH yang acidic, okay, is introduced to the enzyme, the pH of the environment reverts to the optimum level for the enzyme. Okay. The ionic changes of the uh, active sites are restored. So, if it's an ST condition, the pH is not, uh, the pH is not so swift for the enzyme. You, you change the condition. Okay. You change the condition to an alkaline region and it's a swift for the pH, it is still can be used. Thus, the enzyme resume their normal function. Now, Pepsin function most effectively in acidic medium at pH about 2. So this sangat acidic. Pepsin is found in the stomach where the conditions are acidic. Trypsin pula function dia most effective in the alkaline medium at about pH 8.5. It is found in the duodenum where the conditions are alkaline. Dua-dua dijumpa di tem tempat yang uh, acidic. Your stomach, so your duodenum, we are breaking down food molecules. You need a pH acidic and the enzymes are optimum at that location. Okay. Now, substrate concentration. This is another factor which affects the enzyme. Now, let's look at that. Concentration here means the amount. All right. So, initially, an increase in substrate concentration increases the chance of enzyme substrate collision and therefore the rate of reaction increases eventually all the active sites are filled at one time and the rate remains constant the enzyme molecules are said to be saturated and the reaction has reached its maximum rate apa akan jadi when the number of substrate concentration increases the chances for the substrate collision increases juga. Okay, rate of reaction pun tinggi. Which is bagus. 
kita tapi it will reach a saturation uh, limit di mana enzim akan menjadi limiting factor. Contohnya uh, memang penting kita bagi banyak uh, water, uh, nutrients, sunlight, carbohydrate, eh sorry, uh, carbon dioxide for a plant and enough oxygen as well. We need to give that if our plant will die. Tapi it's no use if you keep on giving uh, too much of sunlight for it too much of water for it because other factors for the growth of plants akan tak cukup untuk uh, receive these other factors for its maximum growth. So there is a limiting factor there. In this case, apabila banyak sangat substrate concentration, enzyme pula jadi limiting factor. So at this stage, the only way to increase the reaction adalah to increase the concentration of enzyme. It works the opposite method for enzyme concentration juga. Enzyme concentration pula, same. As the concentration of enzyme increases, there is more chance of enzyme con con substrate collisions. Memang betul. Tapi, the factors is the uh, substrate concentration. Kalau tak ada factor and has abundant substrate, pH, temperature, pressure or constant, rate of reaction is directly proportional towards the concentration of enzyme present until maximum rate is achieved. Okay. Ni soalan akan ditanya di paper 2. They will give like a diagram or experiment to um, draw out or understand and explain this fa factor. So it's important for you to understand the factors that I suggested and I explained to you a while ago and it's really key and vital to understand the lock and key hypothesis and the production of enzyme intracellular, extracellular, semua ada ajar dah, sintesis pun you guys dah tahu juga. Okay, the general characteristics and of the enzymes and these are other factors. Okay, in your biology, you majorly study these four uh, factors je. Inhibitors, activators, salinity, you tak belajar sangat. Tapi I will explain to you. Okay, let's start with inhibitors. Inhibitors are, what is inhibitors in your general knowledge? Inhibitors, they macam, they inhibit something. Right. They, it will stop the a substance which will slow down or prevents a particular chemical reaction or other process which reduces the activity of a particular re, um, enzyme. Okay. So that is inhibitor. Dia akan kacau. Dia akan, uh, there is a lot in, if you learn later on, huh, competitive inhibitors macam tu. Okay. So activators, it's something else. Okay. Activators adalah protein uh, yang increases the gene transcription. Ni juga very advanced level. But what you need to understand is an enzyme activator are molecules that bind this enzyme and increase the activity. So they are opposite of enzyme inhibitor. In the inhibitor, they are kurangkan uh, enzyme activity. Okay. Kurangkan. Activities pula, they improvise. They mempertingkatkan. So it will increase. So enzyme activity. So now let's look at salinity. Anyone know what the salinity means? Okay, so yang kita tahu salinity adalah dia punya salt concentration. Salt concentration or the dissolved uh, organic or inorganic salt content inside the body. Right? That is salinity. Ia juga akan effect kepada the enzymes and how the enzymes are gonna function. So, I will also discuss this regarding with you guys. I would like to explain to you me. Ni, you akan belajar di chemistry. Okay, but it's also in part of enzymes. This is the activation energy and it's vital for you to understand in biology as well. So the energy of the reactants and the activation energy without enzyme, the activation energy with enzyme. So you can see here, energy changes. The way enzyme work, also shown by looking at energy changes during a chemical reaction, 
in a reaction where the product is a lower energy than substrate. Okay, apabila product dia ada kurang energy compared to the substrate, the substrate naturally turns into the product. The equilibrium lies in the direction of the product. Okay, so before it can change into the product, the substrate must overcome energy barrier. This is another important term that you need to understand. Energy barrier called the activation energy. Okay, activation energy is the energy required for it to uh, transform, all right, to transform into a product. So the larger the activation energy is, the slower the rate of reaction will be. Therefore, we would need enzymes. This is because the only few substrate molecules will have sufficient energy to overcome the energy barrier. Then, so imagine pushing boulders over a hump before they can roll down a hill. Okay, contohnya, kalau you nak tolak satu batu yang sangat-sangat besar, you akan mengambil masa yang lama, tenaga yang banyak untuk tolak batu yang sangat besar down the hill. Okay, so with the use of enzyme where example, ramai lagi tolong you, support you tolak batu tu apa akan jadi? Lagi senang you nak tolak batu tu kan? Exactly. Enzyme reduce the activation energy. Enzyme reduce the time. Reduce the amount of energy you are needing it to push the rock. So that the kinetic energy of the most molecules exceed the activation energy required so they can react. Sama lah. Enzyme ni dia akan menolong kita untuk achieve apa kita nak. Just to change the activation energy with enzyme. Nampak tak? Beza dia. Activation energy without enzyme uh, lagi tinggi. The merah punya line is more higher. So the energy of the reactants, we need uh, a lot of energy for to change it to make it a product. Dengan enzyme pula sikit je. So you can dapat product much faster. You will learn more of this in your chemistry. Okay, it's important for you to relate both knowledges into uh, enzyme here so that you would understand what is happening. Now, most of the knowledge regarding enzymes, all right, has been explained to you. You should already understand how these enzymes are working and what do they do and how uh, specific it is, the naming culture, function there. You can tahu untuk pepsin apa, trypsin apa, renin apa juga. Okay. Have you guys learned this in school? Jika tahu tahu tak apa function pepsin? I cannot hear you. Can you say it louder? Belum belajar lagi. Belum belajar lagi. Okay, so pepsin ni, as you I informed just now, dia perlukan acidic condition kan? Alright, so it's a protein, right? So it's found in the stomach lining and it's used for digestive uh, enzyme, right? So you need to know it as a digestive enzyme that is used in your body, okay? To digest protein specifically, okay? To digest protein. I it's about usually K but Christians will target Christians such as this lipase, um, maltase tu semua you can know by the name sebab dia semua nama sugar juga so senang lah tahu tapi trypsin, renin ni semua related dengan protein and tak ada kaitan dengan uh, protein the name the naming culture dia so trypsin also is a uh, it hydrolyzes the protein that's its function. Hydrolysis protein. Also breaking down it lah. And it's uh, produced by the pancreas. Okay. So it is majorly used to digest the proteins. It breaks down the proteins. Starts on the digestion in the stomach. Alright. Now let's look at renin. Renin is also popular. Renet juga popular. Right. These are found in milk. Oh, mostly renin or renate uh, is a protease. Protease is the protein 
punya um, enzim lah you could say that way tapi it's found in um, cheese making or to coagulate the milk right kalau you biarkan milk luar tu you will see enzymatic reaction going over that right to break renin or to uh, create cheese renins are used so dia punya function adalah untuk digestion of milk and it's to curdle or you can use the word coagulate coagulate is an important term that you should remember as well coagulate milk in stomach right a process of considerable importance are very young kalau you pernah notice tak babies when they are small they drink milk right they milk uh, they get their milk from breast milk from their moms or they drink uh, powdered milk and have you seen their vomit they minum susu and then they go vomit pernah tak nampak dia punya vomit macam mana bentuk dia have you guys seen a baby in your life seen a baby vomiting its milk have you seen the form of it no okay so if you had the chance next time if you've seen a baby and it's drinking a lot of milk and it's vomiting its milk because it drank too much you would notice that this milk belum digest lagi sebab badan baby tu tak cukup uh, energy or maybe it doesn't want to okay you don't want to but you will understand or you will see the milk is not in milk form the milk masuk form of cecair masuk form of liquid keluar pula form of pejal it's solidic macam cheese um, in the making punya process of milk will come out it's warm it it's yellowish and whitish color of chunks of milk so how did the baby was able to change the milk which is a liquid form minum masuk perut dia dia muntah keluar pula solidified apa telah jadi kenapa susu tak keluar macam susu je kan that's the question that is the question that you need to ask yourself and know and understand and that's where the enzyme comes in enzyme renin the protease what they do is they will coagulate the milk for easy digestion to break it down later on later in the digestion uh, process in the digestive system so it's an example that you need to understand sama juga camel camel they eat their own vomit if they munta they will eat back their own vomit and most of the time when they munta their food is in the form of solidified material even though minum susu ke apa it will be in uh, solidified because of the renin which is in the um the stomach lining of the camel so same there are few enzymes which are not found in us found in plants and animal example cellulase kita walaupun bagus kita makan banyak sangat sayur that is impossible for us to digest sayur sayuran completely we cannot break it down completely macam lembu break it down the grass we cannot because we don't have the enzyme called cellulase to break down cellulose which is found in the plants so that is why we are receiving cellulase uh, cellulo uh, cellulose in other forms so our body will have the nutrients from plants as well so for now i have touched down most important parts of enzymes is there any questions that you would like to ask me My advice would be for you to relearn chapter 1 to chapter 4 to know the importance of organelles function there because as the chapters increases you will be exposed to more biological terms where you need to know each of the organelles function and apa dia akan buat.
So baru you boleh jawab. Especially next chapter. Mitosis and meiosis where you need to know what it does and how it does. All right. Any questions, guys? Okay, I wanted to discuss the answers with y'all. Tapi, I don't think many of y'all did the homework. So, due to that factor, I couldn't uh, discuss with you regarding the homeworks. So, next week, we will focus more on how um, these enzymes and the factors I told you guys, right? I will teach you guys about the graphs, how it's broken, broken down, and what it is happening deep down there, the concentration gradient, and those matters. And then we will go into the next chapter. All right? So I wanted to share with you guys this uh, image, okay? which is... For your KBAT questions, if they ask you. Okay, siapa who are the people here who are lactose intolerant? Tahu tak apa tu lactose intolerance? Right, to those who don't know what is lactose intolerant, lactose intolerant meaning you cannot consume much of... um milk materials because these milk materials they have this sugar called lactose so what lactose has is it has the this is what happens when you have um a lactose intolerant you tell me lactose intolerance people they don't they are unable to digest the lactose sugar in their body it remains the digest system it is fermented by bacteria in your stomach. Lepas tu, you akan dapat symptoms seperti rasa nak muntah, cramps, bloating. Then you have gas and diarrhea. Okay, for four hours like that. So, some people, when they, they that's why they don't consume cheese material, uh, milk material. Sebab dia tak dapat digest by their body. And they dah pula fermented by their um microorganisms or bacteria in their body. So this is what happens when you do not uh, understand your body and you consume too much of milk. Most Asians are pretty lactose intolerant. So negara orang putih ada banyak lactose intolerant products. Negara kita belum ada lagi. But some people, no matter how much milk they drink, they are all right with it. Some people, uh, they do have a lot of pro problems when they drink a lot of milk. So this is another slide I would like to share with you. This is lipases, um, the lipase sugar. Okay, so sources here, daripada kid or calf or lamb. So lemak lah. So the enhancement of the cheese flavor. So milk and fat uh, through lipase enzyme, they hydrolyze it. Menjadi free fatty acid. So this is for flavor production. Ni yang I tengah share dengan korang ni semua is extra knowledge, right? Which is used for um, like um, factors, external factors for environmental use, right? So remember I also, these are the uses of enzymes that I'm sharing with you. So one of the another common use of enzyme is the use of menas. Venas in your meat. Last week, I even told you guys. The meat, they will use nenas to break down or papaya to break down the uh, meat punya structure yang sangat kental. 
All right. So by using pineapple, nanas, papaya, their skin, their flesh, they have these enzymes, which call it is called papain, which is used to tenderize the meat, and also medically as an anti-inflammatory agent. So I also shared with you guys the rice, right, from Japan that people use it um, to make um, the skin much more um, whiter. So I've also shared with you guys the enzymes found in clothing, like in detergent, to break down the stains of food material. So kalau sejuk sangat pun tak guna, kalau panas sangat pun the air tak guna because the enzymes will be denatured. So you need to have the optimum condition for the enzyme. So there are multiple uses of enzyme. Okay, they are used in a lot of regions, a lot of production. So bukan badan kita je eh. Enzyme ni, dia in food production, dairy industry, biological industry, textile, leather and paper as well. So due to its um really highly specific and functional usage, it is very much favorable by us. Okay, so there are a few questions that I would like to give you guys this week. What soalan tu baru you will be um, introduced to these questions. Enzyme is a complicated subject, right? So you need to um, understand it and so that it will be helpful for you to do questions. But questions are not just very easy. They are quite hard. So that's why we need to do questions. Here are a few pictures. As I stated, rennet produced from stomach of cows and enzyme renin obtained from either calves or stomach or microorganism. Why calf and microorganism? Sebab dia orang akan coagulate. Why baby coagulate? Kita minum, kita muntah susu, tak keluar pun susu macam bentuk baby muntah. Sebab enzyme dia waktu kecil je ada. As we grow, dia punya function kurang. So production dia pun kurang. This is the function of protease. So protease and other enzyme, they use creamier yogurt, yogurt products. So they hydrolyze whey proteins. Whey is the susu inside the milk. Okay, after some process, they will extract the uh, curd, which is the cheese. Whey tu adalah air. So untuk membuatkan dairy products less allergic to people who are lactose intolerant macam tu lah. So I already explained to you guys regarding lactose intolerance, lipases, how these enzymes are used in um, these industries. Okay, uh, another example that I would like to share. This is fruit juices. So fruit juices are extracted using an enzyme called pectinase. So pectin is a substance which helps to stick plant cells together. Fruits like apple and orange contain a lot of pectin. The breaking down of pectin makes it much easier to squeeze the juice out. So logic lah, they want to get the juice from the uh, fruit. They use pectinase to get the juice. Cellulase, you know this from the plants. So to break down cellulose yang terjumpa di plants. So breaks down the surface cellulose fibers of genes. Alright, that's the dye particles are released from the surface of the genes producing this faded effect. Kita pakai jeans yang stylo, stylo kan? And jeans are made from fibers of clothing. So by adding cellulose, it will break down this a particular part. And after applying the dye, it gives the faded effect on the jeans. Cellulose also helps in processing the coffee beans. The coffee we drink has the formation of cellulose to break down the um, coffee beans. This is leather industry, how these enzymes are used. Amylases are digunakan to soft the skin, lipase to hydrolyze the fat, protease um, removing the hair from animal. Nampak nama dia, lipase, lemma, amylase, starch, protease, protein. From the name of the enzyme, you can probably know what is the substrate, what might be the function, what is it used for. See, that is why it's important to understand it. Now, this is enzymes in slimming aids. Again, another additional information. 
all right fructose uh, and how it's used um to for slimming for some people i have one question few question with answers for you guys too okay which is this explain why biological detergents can only be effective and used in low temperature sebab enzymes are proteins whose shape is affected by temperature kalau panas sangat above optimum temperature enzymes be become denatured all right so i think that's all with today i will continue next week I'll explain more about it okay so you can do a lot of more reading on enzymes to understand its functions and a lot more so with that our class for today is done next week we'll focus on wrapping it up by doing some homework i'll give you guys more homework today please do it and we will discuss the answers next week all right with that our class is over thank you guys have a good day bye bye